All right, so there's a, there's a, bit, of a bit of a story here that I don't know the full thing, but um, you'll notice that uh, either the speaker is tiny or non-existent, uh, which, is, uh, which, which is true. He is, uh, he, well, he does exist. He is just not here. Uh, our speaker um, apparently had enough juice to, um, to convince us that we will now deliver this presentation in an automated way, streamed via iCloud.com. That's right, you heard that right. We're going to try to stream an entire presentation from the internet right here on stage. Yeah. So. To the internet, all right. So you guys know about autonomous things. So this is, the, this is DEF CON's first autonomous presentation. Um, and we also know what might happen if you get into an autonomous vehicle. That shit might just completely crash. So we have no earthly idea what's gonna happen here. We hope it really, yeah, we, yeah, right. We, we hope that it goes really well. However, there's one thing for sure. This is the first time we have used iCloud.com as a presentation medium, which we think qualifies iCloud.com as a first time speaker and presenter. So therefore, we're all in this together. Here's to you, iCloud.com. And without further ado, my, my very small co-presenter. Hello, everyone. This is Sanad. Sorry I couldn't make it to DEF CON. Apparently, my visa got rejected. So I have to pre-record my entire talk. Uh, I hope I can convey the entire content of this presentation through it. If you have any questions, just feel free to reach me out to Twitter. My DMs are open. Hello everyone, this is Sanad. Sorry I couldn't make it to DEF CON. Apparently my visa got rejected. So I have to pre-record my entire talk. Uh, I hope I can convey the entire content of this presentation through it. If you have any questions, just feel free to reach me out to Twitter. My DMs are open. So uh, I'm a 19 year old security engineer at GoRoot based in Berlin, Germany and uh, on weekends I play CTF in DCUA, a CTF team based in Ukraine. I normally solve pawn challenges and sometimes upload solutions to them in my GIS. So now let's get started in the talk. Um, So regarding heap exploitation, there have been a ton of techniques being published, like from 2005, uh, House of Spirit, House of Force, which you know allow you to get a chunk anywhere in memory. And uh, the devs started patching most of them, but the research is still going on, and there are a ton of new exploitation techniques coming up, like 2016 House of Orange was a challenge in HitCon. Or 2017 there was House of Rabbit, it was used in a few Asian GTFs also. So. This year I thought maybe I research and find something that's a little more interesting and universally applicable to many different scenarios, which is why uh, this is titled uh, House of Romans. So, so as I said, this technique is leakless. We just use a series of partial overwrites to achieve a complete RCE on binaries that are compiled with Pi2, like we don't really know where the dot text section is, so we can't wrap. And the best part is the server does not need to send us any data back. So even if STD alpha is closed, we could still get a shell. And uh, I demonstrated this technique earlier with a simple UAF, but it seemed to be a pretty severe bug. So I thought maybe do it with a very simple bug, like an off by one or something to demonstrate its versatility and also to use calloc instead of malloc because calloc mem sets at zero so it makes it a bit more tricky and tough to perform this but yet it's doable so as i said the bug is simple off by one and nothing else
So as you can see, I just made a simple binary which has three functions, malloc, write, and free. There's no print function. All it does is basically take a uh, size for malloc and then it mallocs it and uh, you enter a bunch of A's and it gets stored on the heap as you can see. And it's really like a basic skeleton program. So this is like a basic recap of the of how the algorithm works. So you free a chunk, it gets added to its appropriate free list. If it's a fast win, it gets added to that single list. If it's a uh, size greater than zero x eighty, it either gets consolidated or it gets added to an unsorted bin free list or small bin, large bin, which are double link list with the FDBK. And uh, in this program, uh, there's no UOF. As you can see, the pointer and the array is nulled out. There's an by one and a write function, so we can change the size of a chunk and we can overlap with the other neighboring chunks and thus gain control of FD and BK to perform like various sorts of heap attacks. So this is UXD1 size chunk when you free. You get some weird pointers here. These are actually the arena pointers. They point to this main arena, which is ellipsy symbol, to complete the double linked list of the unsorted bin list. And uh, as I said, the main arena is the ellipsy symbol, much like the system, execve, malloc hook, and all of these stuff. So it's interesting to know that malloc is pretty close. So, but I'll talk about that more later on. So. Uh, Okay, and this is just sort of like a refresher to the audience for those of you who don't know what the unsorted bin attack does is it allows you to write um, a particular ellipse address to anywhere you want. Now you can't really control what you want to write, but it's um, the address of main arena. More importantly, it's like a ellipse address, so. And then there are fast win chunks which are size less than 0x80. Their hit point is stored in the main arena at an offset de determined by their respective size. If you free two chunks of the same size, then they're in the same free list. And it makes it easy, really easy to exploit them because it's a single link list, so less checks. And uh, if you find a particular size alignment for fast win free list, which matches the size, then it's like game over. So. So to actually see the off by one in action, this is sort of like the attack plan. So I have these uh, 0 x 21, 21, and D1 sort of like these chunks malloc in the heap. Nothing fishy here, just like I just made a bunch of allocs. And uh, my plan is to use the second 0 x 21 to overflow into, overflow into the 0 x 21 size chunk. And uh, make it something like 0xe1 and then of course put a fake size header at a plus 0xe1 so that we, do, we don't fail any malloc assertions and we bypass all of them and uh, as you can see with this we overlap 0x71, 21 and 0xd1 chunk with our 0xe1 chunk so we could free them and we could actually control freed chunks So this is what it looks like, this 0xe1 chunk, when we return it for a 0xe1 size, it overlaps the 0x2121, and uh, there's our fake size header of 0xa1, and the one thing we have to make sure is that at plus 0xa1, there's a good size, like here you can see how there's a malloc 0x21, this is really important, otherwise you will fail a malloc assertion, especially when you try to free it. So. Uh, So now let's assume we have control of the FD of a Fasman free list. So now we need to think where we want to attack. So 
the best way to attack is which I've seen is to find these libc addresses or stack addresses because they usually start with 0x7f and uh, so we can use the 0x71 free list and make it point to somewhere near this um, how this works is basically we take a libc address and uh, we shift it by 5 bytes so uh, when you shift it and it sort of becomes like 0x00007f which is a valid size for a 0x71 free list so you actually fool malloc into believing that that is a valid fastbin free list on the heap and if and the consecutive 0x71 allocation which actually return you that chunk so just in case you didn't understand this part um, this is how it works so you take libc address and if you have a null q word in front of it then you can just shift it and you can see in the diagram it just keeps shifting 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 until you reference your x7f and the memory that you have to make it point to is something 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 9ad0 it becomes something 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 9ad5 so that's where you actually make it point I chose malloc hook because malloc hook is in a place which is surrounded by a bunch of libcy addresses and a bunch of nulls if you've ever seen this and uh, I think it's possible with free hook too which I also discuss later uh, with an unsortable primitive you can actually get to free hook and free hook gives you more control over RDI and the arguments but nonetheless malloc hook also works to get a shell so I mean, we've seen this in a ton of CTF challenges and write-ups, like point, just point the FD there and get it, but we don't know the libc address, so we can't really set it to somewhere near malloc hook. So we need to find an address which somewhere points close to it, and then maybe we could do a partial overwrite to it. That's like the basic idea is... To do a series of four partial overrides, some in the heap, some in the libc, in order to put a libc address and in order to get an allocation near malloc hook and get your shell. I mean, it's all about partial overrides because we're assuming that the program does not print any data back. Just to show you, like if you have like B A C D in one run, you found out to G D B, and uh, so basically in your script you'll code something like backslash X C D and then backslash X A, and that capital X would be what you boot. You can set it to B, you could set it to one, two, three, four, anything you want. That's the thing you have to boot. So imagine we have this scenario. Like I said, we have zero X D one getting overlapped by zero X D one, and uh, so now I just feel like two zero x twenty one chunk, and the FD points there, and uh, but you see here's where you fool malloc is instead of making it point here, we make it to somewhere at the top, like near that zero x d one chunk. So what we basically do is we tell malloc, hey, after the next zero x twenty one think that the free list is not down there but it's rather up here and then we use the overlap thing to change the size of 2xd1 to 0x71 so now we made malloc think that that's a 0x71 chunk because of course we just changed the size and what's more we even made it think that the 0x7fff7 address thing is actually an fd pointer to the next 0x71 free list of course it's just a pointer to the main arena but we can do a partial overwrite of the lower two bytes of this address and make it something like point close to or above malloc hook and uh, of course the lower three nibbles will always be the same so we just need to boot the 1 by 16 probability that I talked about before This actually turned out to be a really big problem because once I overlap, in order to get control of that overlap, I need to return it. 
If calloc is the only way to return it, then it will just mem set the entire region to zero. What that means is basically, I'm going to talk about the calloc bypass. Actually, I found this while looking at the source code of calloc during uh, a CTF if called RC3 CTF. Um, it was a real good agent CTF. Uh, so, anyways, the the bypass is that calloc uh, if it returns a sort of memory that's from mmap then it thinks that it's already zeroed out and it does not do the operation of nulling it out this is more of a efficiency thing because you expect uh, a memory region that is returned by mmap to be zeroed out so this is the fact that we exploit is we set the lower nibble of uh, every chunk to TOXF, which is basically a map bit, and we'll make Calloc believe that this chunk is not part of the heap, it's part of an M map segment. So Calloc will be like, okay, I don't need to null it out then, and we'll still have the arena pointers there. So for example, you have 0x71 chunk. So it's not 0x71 now, it has to be 0x7f. This is cool for fast bins, but when you come to unsorted bins, you have to make sure, like if you have like 0x91, it should be 0x9f, but you have to also make sure that you allocate exactly 0x9f, because uh, like you know, unsorted chunks have sort of this previous size thing in the next chunk's header. So if you allocate a size less than that, then you would have a size conflict because it will check the previous size. Rather, if you allocate exactly the same size, then it will use up the entire unsorted bin and it won't check the previous size, so you'll bypass that check. Again, like this is just a simple demonstration while I was writing the exploit is, this is what it looks like, this is what it should look like, 0x9f, and then you have the arena pointers, this is a free chunk, and a calloc, and uh, I get the same chunk back, but as you can see, all the memory is not nulled out. It still has the arena pointer, so I can partially override that. Of course, if you want a more detailed analysis, I have posted it on my gist as part of the solution for that particular challenge in RC3 CTM. So this is the first partial override where we have a, a 0x71 free list and we want to make it point somewhere near malloc hook. So we overwrite the lower two bytes with a brute for the four bits. And uh, the next allocation for ZX71 returns. The second partial override is when you want to make malloc believe that the ZXD1 chunk that we are forging is actually part of the ZX71 free list. And to do that, you need to use a f already made ZX71 free list and make it point to the ZXD1 free list. And for that, you need to do a partial overwrite in the heap. So like, for example, I have a pointer here to 1398190 and but instead I need to make it point 1398110 the one which I just overwrote with the pointer to malloc hook. So now malloc thinks after the 13982d0 the next chunk in the free list is 13981110 which A is a 0xd1 chunk which I change the size and B points to malloc hook. Of course even after we reach malloc hook we can't wrap, we can't do stack pivoting, we can't build wrap change on heap, we don't really know the dot text and we can't leak it. So, so here's the third part about writing an ellipse address in malloc hook itself. So the third step in our attack vector is to do an unsorted bin attack on malloc hook. So this is a freed unsorted bin list. The FD and BK both point to main arena because there's only one. And uh, we overwrite it with... Uh, actually, we partially overwrite the lower two bytes again with um, the address of malloc hook minus 0x10. So you don't even need to brute this time because if you already brooted the address to um, malloc, 
Now we're down to the fourth and final partial rule, right? Right? Which is we have a Lipsy address in Mallow Cook and we have a chunk close to it. So now all we need to do is partial override the Lipsy address that we just wrote on Mallow Cook and make it so that it points to system or the magic gadget or any Lipsy function that you want to call. So of course this is what it looked like before Malakog is zero. After it looked like the address of main arena. Of course, if you try to malloc here, then what it'll do is it'll think the main arena is an address and it'll try to execute shell code as there, which of course it will make it crash. So you gotta do the partial overwrite and then call malloc. The best way to trigger a shell is basically to use the magic gadget and then trigger a double free which sets up the and correctly fulfills the stack constraints required to uh, call the magic gadget appropriately. Uh, was that as awkward for you guys as it was for me? Because it was real awkward for me. Thank you all for staying. And how about that for the people that came in and, and were probably very confused. Uh, let's give, uh, I guess, uh, PowerPoint and three clicks for no apparent reason to advance a slide. A big round of applause.